Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Python for Beginners and today we will be talking about indexing and slicing in NumPy. Indexing and slicing are very powerful operations and we frequently use it for our numerical calculations. So without further delay, let's jump into today's topic because we have a lot of things to discuss today. Initially, let us define a 1D array, say np dot array within a bracket, then a box bracket, then we put the elements randomly, say 2, 5, 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 0. Say those are the elements. Uh, if you want to print it, you know, you have to write A again. So we have the elements printed. Now I want to know how many elements are there for that I have to write len a that is the length of a so this is also a powerful operation we use it in machine learning and other codes we will be frequently using it that's why I am talking about all those things so there are 8 elements it is showing so let us just quickly count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah so those are 8 elements now you want to give an index, the index of the first element is 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, so accordingly it will be continuing. So let us just see, I want to have an access to the first, first element, so I should write a0. As I told, index of the first element is 0, you can see 0 is giving 2. If you write a2, so it is giving you third element, 0, 1, 2, so yeah, 9, so this is the third element. So this is how you have to write if you have want to have an access to the element. If you want to have access to a range of elements, say from the first to third element, so what you should write, first index is 0. You want to have access up to third element, so then you should write 3. Now there is one thing you should notice, so you are writing 0 to 3, so 0 is the first that is being printed to. 1 is the second that is being printed 5, 2 is 9 that is also being printed but I have given up to 3. So remember if you give up to 3 it will print up to the previous index that is up to 2 it will be printed. So this is a thing you should remember because otherwise you will be confused. Now there is another thing that having access to negative index say a minus 1. What does it mean? It means from the other end. So if we start counting from the opposite end, so the first element will be minus 1, then the second index will be minus 2. You just keep looking at the number. Yeah, minus 2 is your 3. If you write minus 4, so your minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. It should give 7. Yeah, it is giving you 7. Now what I what if I want to write from minus 4 up to say minus 1. So it is giving you the range. See minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So you started from here minus 4. So this is 7. Then you are going minus 3 that is 6. Then minus 2 that is 3. And then minus 1. It is not getting printed as I have mentioned earlier it will be printing up to the before number, not exactly that index. So you can also have access by putting negative sign. So if you know about all those logics, then it will be very easy to write your code. So we have shown you negative index, range, length of A. Also how to have an access to the indexes. Now let us proceed with a two dimensional array. So what I do, I write, I take an array say b equal to again np dot array. Let us take a two dimensional array say again a bracket 1, 2, 3 for, for the for understanding we are just systematically writing the numbers but you can write irregular numbers as well but just for the purpose of systematic observation I am taking it like this so if I want to print it 
this is b okay so this is a two dimensional array now what if you want to have an access to this element so this is this is the first index is 0 mind it 0 1 2 so this is let us just write it then it will be easier to understand say 0 comma 1 so it is giving you 2 so 0 comma 1 means the first row and the second column so the element is 2 because index 0 means first row index 1 means say second column so it is giving you if i just show you if you write 0 0 it will give you the first number this is 1 then just keep looking at it 0 1 if i do the second is coming 2 if i give 0 2 it will be printing 3 then suppose i want this uh, this one so this would be 2 by 2 if you just visualize this will be 2 by 2 so yeah this is giving you 9 so you should know the index of each and every element in a matrix because you will be dealing with the matrix of say 10,000 by 10,000 numbers in that case you cannot inspect manually like this so you should be confident in order to give the right index and that is why we are spending a lot of time in understanding the basic things because for a 3 by 3 matrix it is very easier to realize but for a 10,000 by 10,000 matrix it is not easy to visualize so you should be confident enough now what I what if I want to have an access of all the rows or all the columns so let us just try it so the syntax is something like this if I write this and print it so what is it doing 4, 5, 6 so can you imagine it is giving you the second row second row the index is what 1 so I have told that 1 is the index for the row so you print the first indexed row that means the second row and this colon means print all the elements of the row so there are three elements 4, 5, 6 and that is why it is printing all the elements but what if I, I tell it to print from the first to the second element that is this then it will be printing 4 and 5 because 0 is the first index so 4 then 1 that is the element 5 and I have already mentioned if you write up to second index it will be printing up to the before number okay so 4 and 5 now similarly if I write B now I want to have an access to a column so what should I write for column it should be all the rows comma which column I want to the first column say 0 you can see 1 4 7 because I have written all the rows all uh, print all the rows this 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 but elements of 0th column only so 0th column is this if I want to write this column then we should write this as 2 because the index of that column is 2 so yeah 3 6 9 so this is how you can have access to a particular row a particular column few elements of that column or few elements of the row we have talked about it so this is very important now few more important things like if we want to put some logical expressions some logical expressions means like we want to know what are the elements that is uh, in this particular uh, array what are the how many elements are less than 5 and how many are greater than 5 so for that what we do we define a variable say c and what we do c is equal to a then within a third bracket or box bracket i write how many elements greater than 5 then i print c yeah so you can see it is giving you the elements which are greater than 5 so greater than 5 means you have 6 7 8 9 it is giving you 6 7 8 9 so all the elements it is giving then if you want to know less than 5 so I write less than 5 and it gives you the elements which are less than 5 that is those those are the elements 
yes two three uh, c is equal to a not a this would be b actually because this is the b matrix so we were working with if it is b it should also be b yeah that we that is why there was an error yeah so the elements 1 2 3 4 are less than 5 so you can see 1 2 3 4 less than 5 now if i want to know less than or equal to 5 then it will be printing 5 also because we have given additional logical expression either less than or equal to 5 similarly you can write greater than or equal to 5 it is giving 5 6 7 8 9 so this is very common very interesting now if i want to see how many even numbers are there so for that there is a module operation so this is i want to know how many elements those are even so even means it will be divided by 2 so let us just write b is equal to b then percentage then 2 and write it double equal 0 if it is true then it will be putting the elements in c so let us just compile it and see you can see all the elements are even now if it is giving a, a remainder 1 then this is giving you the odd number so this is an operator which basically gives the remainder now if i tell if if it is even number then there will be no e remainder if we divide by 2 and hence when i am writing no remainder or zero remainder then it is giving you the even number because see if you divide 2 by 2 it is there is no remainder Similarly, if you divide 4 by 2, again no remainder. So, this is this condition is being satisfied and that's why it is printing the even number. So, this is one of the very important things you can give. Uh, I mean, you can now have another logical expression. Suppose I want to know how many elements in B which are greater than 2 but less than 9. So, let us just define another variable D. Then B the logical expression will be something like this so within the first bracket we put the first logical expression suppose a greater than 3 anything i am writing any logical expression and so two things we have to write how many greater than 3 or less than 9 or less than 8 whatever so a less than 8 and print d now we just click here some error is there let me look at the error yeah the error is i have written b but here again a so it is not a matrix it is b matrix now there will be no error yes you can see so greater than 3 and less than 8 so it is giving 4 5 6 7 so this is a logical expression which we can actually give now you want to print say whether it's a false or true in that case uh, suppose i want to i now i'm printing the elements but so if what if i want to know that just tell me whether the statement is true or false so in this case what i do is i write say any variable say two above like a variable 2 above I mean I am trying to look at how many are there which is above 2 say I am writing b greater than 2 because I am getting 2 above and say equal to also I write say b equal to 2 also above or 2 then if I print this 2 above then I print 
this two above. Now let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see. Initially is false because the element was one. So one is not greater than two or equal to two. That is why it is false. But the other things are either equal to two or greater than two. That's why everything is true. Now if you make it three, then what will happen? You can intuitively guess false false because one is not greater than three or equal to three. Two is not greater than three or equal to three. That's why these two are false. Now why this is true because it is coming under this. So we have given two different logical expression. I guess you can give more logical expression. You can say you are writing if it is two also then also write. So you can see now in the logical expression I have written if b is equal to 2 then also write true. So only one it is not being satisfied that's why this is false. But in other case all the things are true. So we have talked about many things like today we learnt about indexing, slicing, how to separate rows, columns, how to access a particular element in a row or column whether it is a two-dimensional or one-dimensional array. We learned about how to access a range of elements. We learned about the logical expressions and those things will be really helpful for our upcoming programming and we'll be soon going to that. But today I stop here because the purpose of this video was to teach about indexing and slicing only. In the next video, we'll come up with another aspects of NumPy. Meanwhile, I request you to subscribe to our channel. We are uploading other videos. We are working on ComSol Multiphysics. We are working on Engineering Mathematics. So do watch those series and thank you.